So today, British visionary filmmaker Steve McQueen's big theatrical debut, 12 Years a Slave, hits screens. I was born a free man, lived with my family in New York. Be good for your mother. Until the day I was deceived. To Solomon. Kidnapped. Sold into slavery. By no means his actual film debut. I called it that because this is definitely the biggest and most mainstream project that this director has worked on to date. 12 Years a Slave is a film that takes McQueen's already recognized style out of the semen encrusted alleys and shit stained cells of his past cinematic works into an albeit gruesome yet more commercial light. Right off the bat, I'm gonna say that 12 Years a Slave is a really great film. It's generally more accessible for audiences than anything McQueen's made before. You're losing your perverts here, your sexually depraved yuppies, replacing them with slaves, something that most people are used to and familiar with. So the thing about 12 Years a Slave that's really interesting is it shows McQueen using his gusto to convert his perverse style into something that's generally more accessible by lots of different audiences. The problem with this is that it's a double-edged bill. And what I mean by that is, it unfortunately sees McQueen's very distinct and very focused style taking a backseat to the cinematic conventions of Hollywood. So let's talk about the players in this movie because just like every other production that Steve McQueen's made, he has a pretty kick-ass cast going on here. Just like a spread of really good artisanal cheese, you have lots of variety here. You got Chewy Tell Edgy of Four. Let's say that a couple times together. Chewy Tell Edgy of Four. Chew Chewy Tell Edgy of Four. Chiwetel Ejiofor, Chiwetel Ejiofor. So you have Chiwetel Ejiofor and Lapita Nyong'o as your mild cheddar. They're the safe, reliable characters here. So you have Paul Dano and Paul Giamatti who play crazy ass mother <laughs> but they're the oh so necessary, cool, yet stinky blue cheese on this platter. And finally you have Michael Fassbender, easily the craziest mofo in this movie. But just like Limburger cheese, he is not forgotten. You might wonder why I compared Fassbender to Limburger cheese. If you're not familiar with Limburger cheese, it's pretty disgusting and it's frequently compared to body odor. That's Michael Fassbender. He's absolutely unforgettable in this movie. His performance as rotten, downtrodden, completely perverse, and absolutely f insane southern plantation owner Edwin Epps is absolutely mind-blowing. McQueen does a lot of things in this movie that are really unspoken and one of the things that he kind of brings up uh, seems to be that the deeper into the south you go the crazier you get and of course this film has a lot to do with Chiwetel Ejiofor's character, Solomon Northrup, and almost like his descent into darkness. Possibly one of the most interesting things about this film is the parallel that's drawn between Nuango's character, Patsy, and Solomon. Patsy, a naturally born slave, and Solomon, a converted slave, come to have this weird understanding with each other. Coming from polar opposites of the plantation, Patsy being the most favored, Solomon being easily the most hated. Their stories play out in a strange intertwined kind of way where you see the dangerous parallels between being the most liked and most hated on a slave plantation. And while we're still on the topic of characters, I'm still trying to figure out how Brad Pitt showed up in this movie. Obviously he gets one of the producer titles, so I guess that means that he has to be in 12 Years a Slave. Regardless, it was still interesting and a bit funny to see him playing the man in the sky styled Canuck, the graceful Canadian sent down from up above to save all of the poor slaves in the United States. But really though, let's talk about the context of this film. So really, this film is wonderful for everything it doesn't say. While McQueen is obviously confined to some cinematic and narrative constraints, having to tell a story in a really straightforward manner, much more straightforward than anything else he's done before. One of the greatest things about this movie is that it still features snippets, at least, of what McQueen is most famous for. Using body language, simple imagery, really focused and narrow shots to tell a really complex and emotionally rich story. Some of the most gripping scenes from this movie are really the things that happen that appear to be commonplace. Seeing slaves being moved around like cattle, almost like an African-American UPS system. It's really jaw-dropping, and it's definitely one of those things in the film that people may seem to overlook. His no holds barred and unflinching style when it comes to depicting something like a slave being whipped is something that we've never seen other directors do before, and quite honestly makes this movie what it is. And to these claims that 
this grotesqueness is over the top. I mean, that's really the saddest thing about this, is that these things really did happen. And the fact that McQueen's depicting them as such is really admirable. So, 12 Years a Slave is a heart-wrenching, soul-crushing, redemption-bringing film. It's gonna probably win a mother Oscar, and that's what I hope. However, this isn't Steve McQueen's best work. Put in the constraints of Hollywood ethos, we're seeing something that's a lot more tame, and quite honestly, a little bit less interesting than the other things that I've seen McQueen do personally. 12 Years a Slave delivers a very heavy punch for all of its effort. I'm just waiting to see Steve McQueen get back to his crazy perverted shit. Thanks for watching and make sure to visit dorkshelf.com for the latest in films, comics, games, and TV.